Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. I've done a video on this before, but I'd like to go over some things with you tonight, okay? Get your authorized version of the scriptures. You. You. Get the scriptures. Turn in the scriptures to Luke chapter 19. I've done a video on this before. But I want to share this with you right now at this most pertinent hour. <clears throat> Luke chapter 19, verses 12 on to verse 27, we'll be reading and making some stops along the way. Okay? Luke 19 is before the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. This runs parallel with Matthew chapter 25, talking about the millennial kingdom. Okay? This is instruction in righteousness. Luke chapter 19, beginning at verse 12. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and return. Receive for himself a kingdom and return. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, came here as the Lamb, offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jews. Okay? They did not accept that kingdom. Okay? Receive for himself a kingdom and to return talking about the second coming, making mention to, uh, to receive for himself a kingdom of his own people, the Jews, and to return again, because it was prophesied that the Jewish people would reject him. Okay? That's prophesied in the book of Isaiah. You go look that up yourself. Okay? Let's continue. And he called his ten servants, those who serve this nobleman, and delivered them ten pounds. Delivered them ten pounds. <clears throat> he gave gifts unto men, right? And said unto them, Occupy till I come. Do something with what you have been given. Build up, not to pull down. But his citizens hated him. Note the difference, okay? Note this, stop right there. A certain noble one, uh, verse 12, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom, okay? And to return, to receive for himself a kingdom. Again, offering the kingdom first unto the Jewish people for the crucifixion. The king had come, here's the kingdom, let's go. And to return, see, had the Jewish people at that time received their king, their promised Messiah. You can make a good argument. This probably, we wouldn't be here today, would we? At least not in this form, right? Okay. <clears throat> Verse 13, and he called his 10 servants, servants, the noblemen, to receive kingdom. Okay. The noblemen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, okay? His servants, people who serve the nobleman, right? Okay, you with me? Verse 14, but his citizens hated him. The citizens of what? Our country. 
some like to say this uh, means that he went on to the Gentiles. No, 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 no. He went on to his own, and his own received him not. Okay? Okay? But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him, saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. Okay? Right there, you have the rejection of their king. Okay? But now, the attention shifts. And it came to pass that when he was returned, second coming, having received the kingdom, came down, you know? <clears throat> then he commanded these servants to be called on to him, the judgment seat of Christ. Then he commanded these servants to be called unto him, to whom he had given the money. You get that one, right? The money, the treasures of heaven. It is given unto you, but for them, parables, okay? He who is of God hears God's words. You hear them not because you are not of God. Let's continue. Then he commanded, the, uh, let's read this again. Then he commanded these servants to be called on to him, to whom he had given them the money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Okay? Okay? What did you do? What did you get? Then came the first, saying, Lord, Five pound hath gained ten pound. And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in very little, have thou authority over ten cities. Okay? Ten pounds. Okay? Then came the first saying, Lord, thy pound, singular, the gift that was given unto this, in, this individual, hath gained ten pounds. Ten for his one. Okay? did something with it. Distinctly, okay? The first. Then came the first, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained ten pounds, okay? And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in very little, have thou authority over ten cities. And then, and the second came, second, distinct, second, first, second came, saying, Lord, thy pound, singular, has gained five pounds, not as much as the first, who with the one pound gained ten pounds, but this one, second, distinction, see that? First and second, okay, you see that distinction, okay? Saying, Lord, thy pound, singular, has gained five pounds. So, okay, first is distinct from second, right? Right? Okay. We get that? Okay. The first gained ten with the one pound, the one gift that the Lord had given him. The second, distinct from the first, with that with his pound that the Lord gave him, okay, he gained five. Distinct, lesser than the first, yet distinct and individual. You see that? Okay. Verse 19. And he said likewise to him, Be thou also over five cities. And another, note that. How come it doesn't say third there? Hmm? How come it doesn't say third? Hmm. Hmm. And another came saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound which I have kept laid up in a napkin. Hold your place here. Go to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. 
verses 21 on to verse 23. Okay, hold your place in Luke. Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 on to verse 23. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. Verse 23. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Go back to Matthew chapter 19. <clears throat> Verse 20 again. And another came, saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. Here's this one who called him Lord, not Lord, Lord, but Lord, okay? And this individual was given pound. But he kept it hid in a napkin. Okay? Okay? But notice again that it doesn't say third. And it says, and another came. Not third, because it says, <clears throat> then came the first. Verse 18, then, and the, and the second came. Hmm. But verse 20. And another came. Not a, not like the first or the second, not the third, but another came. Saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound which I have kept laid up in a napkin. For I feared thee. I, well, I fear the Lord. Because thou art an astute man. Thou takest up that thou laidest not down, and reapest that thou didst not sow. Hmm. Hmm. That's interesting. Go to Matthew chapter 25. Look at this. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 25. Okay? Matthew chapter 25, verse 24. Check this out. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. Hmm. Go back to Luke chapter 19. <clears throat> Picking up at verse 20. And another came saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. For I feared thee, because thou art an astute man. Thou takest up that thou laidest not down, and reapest that thou didst not so. Verse 22. And he saith unto him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Calls him a servant, but a wicked servant. Thou knewest that I was an astute man, taking up that I laid not down, and reaping what I did not sow? Called him Lord. Wherefore then gavest not thou my money into the bank? Into the bank. 
you put money into the bank in theory <laughs> and in a savings deposit right and over time it's supposed to grow right okay and is not a bank usually there for the citizens hmm? usually see if you have something small in theory <laughs> You put it into the bank, and over time, with that thing called interest, it's supposed to grow. It's supposed to grow slowly, but it will grow if you do it, if you give that. Okay? <clears throat> if you have one pound, one thing given to you of the Lord, what are you doing with it? Hmm? What are you doing with it? And looking at verse 21 again, look at this. For I feared thee, okay, because thou art an astore man, thou takest up that thou laidest not down, and reapest that thou didst not sow. And in verse 20, it says again, and another came saying, Lord, Behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. Okay? Kept laid up in a napkin. Nice piece of soft cloth, open it up, look at it. Oh. Puts it in its pocket. Instead of that nice shiny pound, giving it on to others. So at least it may multiply, see. One pound. They both, the, uh, the first and the second, also had just one pound. But what did they do with it? Uh, do you see in here anywhere where the Lord forced them to do anything with it? Forced them like, hey, no. Verse 21 again. There's accusation. I feared thee because thou art an austere man. Thou takest up that thou laidest not down, and reapest that thou didst not sow. There's accusation there. There's boldness there. But you know what else is there? Look at it. Look at that. Doth this not remind you of someone making excuses? Look at look at it again. Look look at text. Look really closely at it. Okay? Look at verses 20 and 21. And another came, another came, saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound which I have kept laid up in a napkin. Kept it to himself. In a napkin, right? Okay. Hold up. For I feared thee, because thou art an austere man. There's the accusation. Number one, for I feared thee. Excuse. First is the excuse. Then the accusation. Thou takest up that thou laidest not down, and reapest that thou didst not sow. Excuse. And then, all the while he says, Lord, and said, I fear thee. You get what I'm saying, don't you? Good. Let's continue. Let's pick up from verse 24. And he said unto them that stood by, take from him the pound. And give it to him that hath ten pounds. Verse 25. And they said unto him, Lord, he hath ten pounds. For I say unto you, that unto every one which hath shall be given. And from him that hath not, even that he, even 
that he shall even that he hath shall be taken away from him. But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. Okay? You know, somebody who has one pound, one thing, look at this. Go to Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. <clears throat> Luke chapter 8. We will be reading from verses 26. Oh, on to about 39. Go there. Luke 8, verses 26 on to verse 39. And they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils long time and wear no clothes neither abode in any house but in the tombs when he saw jesus he cried out and fell down before him and with a loud voice said what have i to do with thee jesus thou son of god most high i beseech thee torment me not for he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man for oftentimes it had caught him and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters and he brake the bands, and was driven of the devil into the wilderness, a sign of devil possession. Unexplained, illogical strength. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, with a capital L, because many devils were entered into him. And they besought him, that he would not command them to go out into the deep. And there was here, and there was there and heard of many swine feeding on the mountain, and they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them, and he suffered them. Then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked. When they that fed them saw what was done, they fled, and went and told it in the city and in the country. Then they went out to see what was done, and came to Jesus, and found the man, out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed, and in his right mind, being in the grave. Sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed, and in his right mind, and they were afraid. His mind, he had, was, he, had, his, he had a right mind, clothed. The devils were out of him. And it starts with sitting at the feet of Jesus, the one who delivered him from the legion. Clothed, being clothed upon, Okay, oh, don't worry, we're going to touch on that. Being clothed upon, after the devils have been cast out, legion. Are you following me thus far? Okay. Verse 28. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him. And with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God, most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. The devils inside this man were speaking. Obviously, obviously. But our Lord commanded them out. Set this man free. And it says here, <clears throat> and it says here, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed. Tell me something. When you are truly saved and born again and converted, are you not clothed?
Is not the blood of Jesus Christ a cleansing agent that cleanses you from all sin? Isn't his righteousness imputed to you? Or do you have no understanding or infinitesimal concept of what that is? Hmm? This guy was sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. They also which saw it told them by what means he that was possessed of the devils was healed. Was healed. People are going to notice change, right? Then the whole multitude of the country of the Gadarenes round about besought him to depart from them, for they were taken with great fear. And he went up into the ship and returned back again. Great fear because of what the Lord had done. Just one. Just one. One pound, maybe? <laughs> now the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him. Let me go with you. Please, let me go. You've done this. Let me go with you. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to thine own house. Return to thine own house. And shew how great things God hath done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city. How great things Jesus had done unto him. He says, God, how great things God hath, hath done unto thee. And then it says right here, how great things Jesus had done unto him. Boom! You see that, of course. And let's read verse 4. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. Okay? Man who had the legion. He was told here, return to thine own house and shew how great things God hath done unto thee. He was possessed with devils. Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, cast them out. Okay? The man was sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And the Lord told him to do one thing. As he does to all who are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. Return to thine own house and shew how great things God hath done unto thee. And when people who knew you as a lost man, when they see that, yes, God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, dwells within you, that's going to scare people. And I, I have experience with this. What happens, right? See, only you of the church of the living God are going to get this. Okay? Yes. What happens? They're afraid of you. They don't want anything to do with you. But he had one thing to do. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. One thing to do. What great thing Jesus had done. Go to Luke now, 14. 
Luke 14. Luke chapter 14. Now, quickly go back to Luke 19, back to verse 21, okay? For I feared thee, there's your excuse, because thou art an austere man, thou takest up that thou laidest not down, and reapest that thou didst not sow, okay? Verse 22, and he said unto him, out of thine own mouth, will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knewest that I was an austere man, taking up that I laid not down, and reaping that I did not sow? Wherefore then gavest not thou my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have received mine own with usury? And he said unto them that stood by, Take from him the pound, and give it to him that hath ten pounds. Go to Luke chapter 14. <clears throat> Verses 15 on to verse 24. Luke 14, verses 15 on to verse 24. And when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper, and bade many, and sent his servants at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. Kingdom, you know, here. Come on, let's do this. Okay, let's continue. And he sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. Look at verse 18. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have an excuse. Supper's ready. Come on, let's do this. Ah. What? Is there a lion in the way? Hmm? <laughs> you bet there is. Is that going to stop you? And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and shewed his lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor, and the maimed, and the halt, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it has done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be full, may be filled. For I say unto you, that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Second Corinthians chapter 2 or uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Remember what we looked at with Legion, right? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 on to verse 21. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, and all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Go and tell them what great things Jesus had done for you. 
Oh, and I'm not talking about materially. No, 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 no. Get your head out of the ground and set it on things there, okay? I was the worst of the worst. Sodomite. Fornicator. Drunk. Drug user. And the Lord Jesus Christ broke me to pieces. Because what I had done, what I had done, was reason for why he was on the cross. He also let me know that unless I got right with him. You know where I was going? I was going to hell. And I was going to burn forever. My worm would not have died. And the fire is not quenched. And you know what that did? That scared the hell out of me. Why? Because I was guilty. I was part of what all those outside of the Church of the Living God are guilty of. And even we of the Church of the Living God are guilty of. But see, the difference is. were broken and terrified and so sorry that what I did put him there What I did put him there. And you know what? He had mercy on me. Because he says there's a way to be right with him. See, he has to break you. And in that brokenness, fear of the Lord, your fear of going to hell, and your sorrow for what you did to him will be there when he breaks you. But are you fighting it? And in my broken sorrowful state I did the only thing that I'm told to do when I was broken sorrowful I put my trust on him and I cried out in the bathroom at my former employment on my knees on the concrete floor weeping snotting all over myself Lord Sorry. Please forgive me. I repent. I'm not good. Trust you. Save me. Okay? Okay?
Verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. You know what great things the Lord had done for me? He saved me from hell. He gave me his spirit himself. He died on the cross for me because of what I've done. You know what? I deserve hell. But because I came to him, broken and totally, totally a mess. I'm sorry. Not sorry that I got caught, but sorrowful. That I was the man. And see, when you reach that point, belief on the Lord Jesus Christ, that's the only thing you have. And see, once you're broken and sorrow and guilt and despair and hopelessness has filled your heart. You will call on the name of the Lord. Go on to thine own house and tell them what great things God hath done unto thee. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we may, might be made the righteousness of God in him. Not by him, in him. Imputed righteousness to the saved sinner. And you have been given the ministry of reconciliation. And are you making excuses? Again, is there a lion in the way? You bet there is. You bet there is. Seeking whom he may uh, devour. But is that going to stop you? Are you going to come up with excuse after excuse after excuse after excuse and justify yourself? Good thing. Because thou art a stir man. Yeah. Well, well, I, I, I'm not called to this. I, I'm not. I'm not called to that. I'm not. Okay. 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 Remember what Peter said of John when the Lord said, "Follow me. Feed my sheep." Right. Peter says, to, uh, points at John, it's like, oh, Lord, what is this guy going to do? And the Lord is like, uh, if I want him to stay here till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Okay? Don't, don't worry what he's called another one of your brethren to do. What has he called you to do? says so right here <clears throat> it 
it says right here that in verse 19, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. I did that on my notes, by the way. Just so I can remember. <laughs> hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now, that doesn't mean that you go and give your testimony single time but see when the Lord hath wrought in you people are going to notice it and those who are without claim to be of the church of the living God jealous because they know that you have what they don't Lord Jesus Christ God our and they make excuse. They seek to justify themselves. What are you doing? Hmm? What's wrong with you? Hmm? Are you going to get up there to the judgment seat? Only to have our Lord be ashamed of you? Or are you one of those who say, Lord, Lord, and he never knew you, even though you play the, good, the game well, right? What's wrong with you, man? What's wrong with you? You know, now's not the time to be playing around. You know what the scriptures say about the final destination of those who are without. Are you playing games? What's wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Well, I'm not called to this. I'm not, you know, they, he has this guy. He's doing this. You're doing this. Yada, yada, yada. So I'm going to go and hide my, my pound in a napkin and just sit on your duff. Oh, and I'm not talking against the eternal security, you twits. No, 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 no. Committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Again, I did that little skip on purpose. Okay? Our reasonable service. Okay? Let's look at that. Romans chapter 12. Okay? Verses 1 and 2. Okay? Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. You ought to know these by heart. I beseech you, therefore, brethren... By the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to, the, to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It says not to be conformed to the world. Blaming other people, making excuses, accusing We've been given the word of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. 
tell them what great things the Lord hath done for you. Okay? And when the Lord is in you, it kind of comes out of you, you know? Not come and go, come and go. No, 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 no. No. People are going to know. People are going to know. You can only fake it for so long. And how late the hour is, it is quite sad. It's quite sad. And those who possibly are truly of the church and living God, but yet make excuses. I'm not called to this. I'm not called to that. I don't know about you, but I want to serve the Lord. That's what I want to do. That's what I'm called to do. You have two. <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter 12. I've done a video on this before, you know. But we're hitting it again today at this pertinent hour. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Led by who? Mystery Babylon? Roman Catholicism, perhaps? Hmm. Your own self? Which one is it? Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts with the same Spirit, and there are differences of administrations but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another divers kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the selfsame spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will, as he will. Whereas the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit, being like-minded with those who are truly of the church of the living God. Some of us actually know what that's like. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not of the hand, and because I am not the hand, I am not of the body? Is it therefore not of the body? Hmm. Remember those guys in Luke, they all had one pound, right? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it hath pleased them, pleased him, excuse me. But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it hath pleased him. 
and if they were all, and if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body? And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more are those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. You remember when almost a year ago the one video I did on First Corinthians chapter twelve? Remember that? You remember, right? And you look in, you look in. Nay, much more of those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. Are necessary. Beloved. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. And our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow, we bestow more abundant honor. You know, like the brother who will say just one thing, and the Lord through that one thing will convict you and cut you about something. The one who often will say, Lord, use me. Well, praise the Lord. Yeah. When in reality, well, you'll know how much the Lord has truly used you at the uh, judgment seat of Christ. Yeah. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. Having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. And you're making excuses. You're not serving the Lord in the capacity that he has put you in. When he has given you. One pound. That there should be no schism in the body but that the members should have the same care one of another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Are you suffering with your breath? Or is it something that you pick up for a moment and drop and go on to the next? I know there are those of you that do. Those of you who don't. Of the Church of the Living God. Trump Church.
Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, governments, diversities of tongue. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet shew I unto you a more excellent way. And then he talks about charity, self sacrifice. You know. Pick up your cross daily and follow him. <clears throat> hmm. Some of you might not get this, but um, there are some of you who will. There are some of you who will. And I could really care less about those who are not, and you know, you just, <laughs> yeah. The hour is late. And <laughs> things are going to start falling apart. And don't you want to do anything for the Lord? Or are you just going to sit there? It's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you do, we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.